हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज संदीप सतपथी द ऑथर ऑफ सलमोनेला माइकाडेटिस सस्पेक्टिंग एंड एस्टिमेटिंग द एसोसिएटेड क्लिनिकल कॉम्प्लिकेशंस पब्लिश रिसेंटली इन क्लिनिकल मेडिसिन रिव्यूज इन कार्डियोलॉजी बाय लिबर्टेस एकेडेमिया द पब्लिकेशन बेसिकली टॉक्स अबाउट सलमोनेला माइकाडेटिस इंफेक्शन इज प्रिवेलेंस वर्ल्ड वाइड एंड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली लीड्स टू द improper clinical estimation or diagnosis in a proper timing leading to an inefficient treatment and outcome with a worldwide prevalence accounting for 16 to 33 million cases per year salmonella myocarditis still remains a victim of neglected clinical estimation and diagnosis along with infrequent or delayed suspicion by clinicians one of the obvious reasons is the inconsistent and heterogeneous disease manifestation and the unusual resemblance of symptoms with other forms of inferior myocardial infractions or myocardial injuries salmonella myocarditis has witnessed a global prevalence with higher cases during seasonal fluctuations most commonly reported cases belong to developing countries such as nepal pakistan india turkey greece and few cases report of the incidents among travelers from uk and usa who have recent trips to the developing countries the geographical bias of higher disease prevalence among developing countries is due to lack of proper sanitation hygiene and food and water based contamination that leads to frequent exposure and attack by salmonella salmonella most commonly associated with typhoid and other gastroenteritis infections present a non complicated and non fatal clinical issue which often leads to delayed treatment leading to further fatality and medical complications in these cases of immunocompetent persons bacteriological myocarditis involves secondary infection of the myocardium typhoid and otherwise water and food born gastrointestinal infection can lead to life threatening situation where reports exist of involving cardiac arrest multi organ failure and incidences of mycotic aneurysms acute congestive heart failures and osteomyelitis here in this paper we talk about how the salmonella myocarditis can be a case of compl- complicated salmonellosis or salmonella sepsis where occurrence can occur, be ranging from both adults and children salmonella myocarditis has been a case of medical underestimation in terms of the occurrence identification and treatment decision for most patients One prominent reason is the lack of significant scientific literature or reports highlighting the same. In addition, most often the complications associated are not exclusively limited to myocardial infection and thus end up being neglected or undiagnosed. Cases of virus induced myocardial infection and virus mediated exacerbation are well realized in a scientific community, but the case is not same for bacteria related myocardial infection. rarity of bacteriological myocardial infection and the lack of prompt and first hand medical suspicion have led to have led to this consistent medical negligence ultimately resulting in further complications in this review we discuss about the case histories of salmonella myocarditis and the existing treatment options this review also tries to summarize the most common observed electrocardiographic and functional changes noted in case The realms of salmonella myocarditis and major causes for the clinical underestimation of the disease involves rarity of bacteriological myocarditis in adults and children which leads to deficiency of scientific reporting and erroneous case selection for study there is also no universal or exclusive model for diagnosis for salmonella myocarditis infection in addition several cases of myocarditis due to salmonella are most often neglected clinically due to suspected case of inferior cardiac infarctions salmonella regulates host immune response like t- tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 6 sips and interleukin 20 and it is as result this immunological biomarkers The specific molecules that are differentially either upregulated or downregulated add to the characterization of the disease and help in both diagnosis and prognosis for the same. However, the science of biomarker identification and validation mostly targets spatiotemporally upregulated molecules during the disease state. 
So understanding the biomarkers for salmonella associated myocarditis will add further to the scope of the review. And here we thus have summarized a list of biomarkers ranging from inflammatory biomarkers to cardiotropic viruses as biomarkers. We have also listed non-cardiotropic viruses, cardiac hormones, enzymes, proteins and autoantibodies. Moving across the molecules and diagnostic parameters of detecting salmonella myocarditis, we talk about specific case studies and disease pattern reported that will enable us in further future diagnosis. We report a, a paper reported by Adhikari et al. in 1995 where they talked about electrolyte in 2011 from Greece. They reported how an 18-year-old healthy male patient developed myocarditis post-salmonella infection. There are reports also about the wolf parkinson white syndrome in an 18-year-old male who has symptoms of 9 days fatigue, seeking chills accompanied with sweating chills and palpitations. The patient was initially confused for inferior myocardial infections as the electrocardiographic signature suggested similar pain. We further talk about a, a report where they talk about salmonella gastroenteritis causing myocarditis as well as rhabdomyolysis. Salmonella myocarditis is most often neglected to understand in along with its co-occurrence of rhabdomyolysis. The report of Al Samkhani et al. talks about a 28-year-old male with no prior medical history having a coincidence of both myocarditis and rhabdomyolysis. We also come across a recent report reported by Sahas in 2014 where they talk about a UK traveler who had salmonella myocarditis infection post his journey. The 25-year-old male from UK who returned from a trip reported with sudden pain in chest in case of multidrug resistance. There was a study involving 48 children who had salmonella infection out of which 30 patients had shown symptoms of myocarditis. It was shown that the multidrug resistance could be successfully treated, however, with a combination of gentamicin and cephalexin, a, a treatment therapy known as antibiotic prophylactic treatment, but initially they were showing they started showing symptoms of drug resistance. There are also case reports of salmonella myocarditis among pediatric patients, since mostly we focus on adult patients as they are most often clinically diagnosed or reported. We talk about a patient from Turkey, a, a, a kid, a, a child of 14 years old who was diagnosed with salmonella infection and had positive secondary involvement of myocarditis. As an argumentation to our efforts to cure salmonella myocarditis, it is imperative to understand the molecular signaling crosstalks that involve this bacterial mediated myocardiac infection and the expression patterns of key molecules and the bacterial propagation mode. We believe the academic research, the scientific knowledge and the clinical outcome and diagnosis will ultimately help in, in most cases of myocarditis post salmonella infection, the real incidence remains largely neglected and underestimated. The exact incidence of salmonella myocarditis is very hazy as various authors quote differing rates of prevalence and this is mostly due to lack of clear rules for case selection and non-standard diagnostic criteria. The deficiency in prompt and proper clinical suspicion, along with the rarity of bacteriological myocarditis, has limited our approach and understanding of how salmonella results in myocarditis, and further cardiac complications in healthy patients. At one point, this indicates that there is no dearth of scientific experiments that can be performed to unravel this mystery of co-infection or cardiac damage triggered by bacterial infection. However, the fact that there is a major gap in the scientific reports and thank you for watching the video abstract. We hope that our message of how the salmonella myocarditis estimation and clinical suspicion can be improved with biomarker identification and your diagnostic tool gets conveyed to the clinician and academic researchers. We hope that further development in the diagnostic technologies and characterization of newer biomarkers can validate this process in a more better way. Thank you.